So now that we've got the design file set up, we want to get the part which we're going to machine into this file. Uh, for my example, I'm going to use this locator component here, which I've already uploaded. Now there are two obvious methods uh, for inserting a part into a design file like this in Fusion 360. Um, I'm going to show you both methods and then I'm going to explain why I use the second method. Now the first method and the method that people are most likely to be aware of is to use the insert command. So what you do is you right click on whatever you want to insert into the design and you hit insert into current design. And then it appears on the left here in your browser. I'll just move the component out a little bit. And what it has is it has this little link and that means that it's linked to the design file which has been pulled through. So any changes you make in this file will pull through into this, which is great because it means you're always working on the latest um, design. So when you're, you've set something up for machining and you make some changes in here, they'll throw through into your machining file. However, the downside of this is if you want to edit this component, say you want to add some chamfers or so on, um, you can't. See, I'll try and just make an edit here by extruding that face. And you see it forms an extra body. It doesn't combine with this part. Um, if you want to make edits, you have to right click here and hit break link. Now if I try and edit this again, you see it joins the component. So I am able to edit the component. However, the downside of that is because the link is now broken, any changes I make in here will not flow through into my um, CAM workspace. So I will undo that and I will show you my preferred method. So the second method, the method that I use, is to derive both the part that I want to machine and my machining file for the pocket NC into a new design file. And then I use that file to do my machining setup. So first I'll show you how to derive these files and then I'll explain why it's beneficial to do so. So go to the derive command here, click that. Oh, you need to save and continue. So just save the version. And then you'll be giving a list of options. So you can create a new design, which is what I want to do. I don't want to add it to an existing design. And then you're giving two options here, model objects and one component in design, which isn't very well explained. So I've decided I'll just show you what they are. If you select this option, what it does is derive this into its own design file, but it makes it a subcomponent of a new component. So it opens up a new tab like this, and whereas it's at the top here, it is now a subcomponent. Whereas if you choose the second option, which is closed, um, it will still stay as a stop top component like it is in here. So I usually go with the second option when I'm deriving something. So I'll close both these down and just show you how it works. Don't save. Don't save. Derive. So create new design. I'll choose the second option, so one component is design. And then you select what you want to derive, so that's that. You can uh, derive the parameters if you want. I don't need to to this, but it's quite handy. Um, if you do do that, so click OK. It'll take a moment to think about it. And then I'll open a new tab like so. And everything is just pulled through from here into new design folder. There are a few things you'll notice when you derive a file like that. So the first is that some things become visible, which weren't in the... Um, in the file that they were derived from, like joints here, all the joints have become visible. And the second thing is that anything that's ground is no longer ground. So all these have lost their little red pin. So what you need to do is just reselect those and hit ground. And those can no longer move. Um, the last thing you'll notice is that the design history is now clear, which is great because anything you do in this file uh, for machining this part once you've inserted it is specific to that part. All the clutter that comes with the main design file is gone. So it's brilliant for seeing what you've done that's specific to this part. 
So once you've done that, save this as your derived file. So I just put derived, uh, and then whatever locator I want, uh, and sorry, whatever part I'm machining, I just put the name after it. And it allows me to easily recognize what that file is for. So save. And then the next thing I do is I make sure that I know this is my master. So I rename this master. Hit enter. And the next thing you want to do is to derive the locator component into the design file we've just created, the derived design file. So do the same as you did with the uh, master file. Hit derive, select the component, but this time you want to add it to your existing design because you've already got the file created. Um, and you no longer have an option to choose there. I'll just hide that. Um, yeah, okay. And then select the file that you want. So I want the derived file, hit select. And you'll see the locator component is now visible in the derived file. So the beauty of using this derived file is that any changes you make to the master file here or to the part file will flow through into the derived file. So if you make a change here and you hit save, what you'll get in the derived file is a little yellow warning here, which will say something to the effect of you're not using uh, the latest design file, click to update, and you click it and the part file will automatically update. So this gives you the same benefits as when you insert a linked component or a linked part into the current design in the upstream changes flow down into the derived file. However, if I just hide this, you'll see that unlike when you use the insert into current design command, you can edit the part. So I'll do as I did before. I'll extrude this face. And you'll see that I'm now editing the part. This is great. It means you don't have to clutter up your main design file with CAM specific setups. So for instance, any sketches you make or any chamfers or fillets or tabs you add to the part um, won't be included in your main design file. They'll just be included in this file. It also means that if you make any changes to your uh, main file, they flow through into all your derived files. So you can use this one master file for lots and lots of different parts. And then if you want to change something, say for instance, you get something wrong in your master file, you just make one change in here and it updates all these files automatically. The beauty of Fusion though, is that we have version control. So should you make a mistake in this master file, that mistake may flow through into all the um, derived files, but you can go back you can look at a previous version and you can hit this button, so promote, and then that becomes the latest file. So you can undo your undo your mistakes and then save it and that uh, save or update all the other derived um, files and you don't have to worry about them all being corrupted as a result of one mistake. So that is my preferred method for setting up a file ready for machining.